In this video, I will show you how to add OAuth2 authentication to Spring Boot applications using GitHub and Google providers. So if we go to the home page, we can see that we are not authenticated. Let's click on login and let's login using GitHub. And here we can see that we are authenticated correctly. Let's log out and let's login again using Google. Then log out. Then in the next video, I will show you how to change the role of the OAuth2 users, how to create this custom login page, how to add role-based authorization, and how to register users in the database. So here when we click on GitHub, we can see that we are authenticated successfully and we can see that the user role is client. And here we have the message, hello client. So we can access to the client page but we cannot access to the admin page. So here we have forbidden. Now let's log out and let's log in again using Google. So this time we can see that the user role is admin. Here we have the message hello admin. We cannot access to the client page. So here we have forbidden, but we can access to the admin page. And here we have the list of the registered users. We have the user role and the login methods. So this user has the role client and is registered using GitHub. And this user has the role admin and is registered using Google. You can find the link of the second video in the description. First, we need to create a project with three dependencies. So we need Spring Web, Time Leaf, and we need OAuth2 client. So this dependency already includes Spring Security, so we don't need to add Spring Security. Then let's open this project using an IDE. So this is the created project. Now we need to create a new controller. So first let's create a new package. And let's call it controllers. Then let's create a new class. And let's call it home controller. So this class is a controller and we need to annotate it with at controller. Then let's create two routes. So we can create the root URL that will return the index page and we can create slash user that will return the user page. Now we need to create these two pages and we need to create them in the resources folder and the templates. So we need to create two HTML files. The first one should be called index. Then let's create the user file. Then let's update the index page. So I will use bootstrap. So let's go to the browser. And here let's type bootstrap. Let's go to the first link, then docs. And let's use this code that includes Bootstrap CSS and JavaScript from the CDN. Then let's paste it here. Let's change the title of the window. Then let's add the navbar and the body. So we can add this navbar here we have the name of the application. Then we have the home item and the user item. And if the user is not authenticated, we will display two buttons, the register button and the login button. And if the user is authenticated, then we will display the profile item and we will display this logout button. So here we can see that we have this input field, which is hidden, that includes the CSRF protection token. So either we need to add this input field or we need to use the time leaf attribute th action. So here we can write th action that will include the CSRF protection token. And in this case, we don't need this input field anymore. So this form that contains the logout button will be displayed only if the user is authenticated. Then let's update the content of the page. So we can delete the h1 element. And we can replace it with this bootstrap container that contains the title home page. 
and we have this paragraph that will be displayed only if the user is authenticated. So if the user is authenticated, we will display the user name and the user role. Then let's update the user page. So here we can add the navbar that contains the title of the application and we can display the text user page. Now let's run the application. So let's go to the main file and let's run it. So now we can see that the application is running correctly and it is available at this port number. So let's go to the browser. And here let's type localhost colon 8080. So here we are redirected to the login page because by default all the routes are protected. But we can see that we don't have the OAuth2 providers. So now I will show you how to add GitHub and Google providers. First let's add GitHub. Let's go to GitHub. Let's click on this item. Then settings. Then developer settings. Then OAuth apps. Let's create a new application. We can call it best store for example. Then we need the URL of the home page which is localhost colon 8080. Then we need the authorization callback URL. So it is localhost colon 8080 slash login slash OAuth2 slash code slash github. So to find this URL, here we can type Spring OAuth2. Let's go to the first link. And we can follow this documentation. So here we can see that we need to use this URL as the authorization callback URL. Then a register application. Then we need to save the client ID and the secret in the application. Let's stop the application, then let's go to the file application.properties and we need to add additional properties. So we need to add the client ID and the secret. Let's copy them from GitHub. So this is the client ID, let's copy it. And let's save it here. Then we need to generate the secret. So let's click on this button. Let's confirm the access. Then let's copy the secret. Let's paste it here. Then let's add Google. So let's go to the browser. And here let's type Google Cloud Console. Let's go to this link. Then let's create a new project. Let's call it best store project. Then create. And here we can see that the project is created successfully. Let's select it. Then let's click on APIs and services. Then credentials. And let's create new credentials. So we will create OAuth client ID. But here we can see that we need first to configure the consent screen. So let's go back, then let's select OAuth consent screen, then get started, and let's provide a name to the application that will be visible to the users. We can call it best store. Then we need to provide an email address. I will provide my email address. Then next, let's select external, then next. And let's provide another email address. I will use the same email address. Then next. Let's select this box, then continue. Then create. Then let's click on branding. Then here let's provide the URL of the home page, which is localhost colon 8080. Then let's click on save. Now let's click on audience. And let's click on publish the application. Let's click on confirm. Then let's create a new OAuth2 client. So let's click on clients. Then create client. So sometimes this doesn't work. In this case we need just to refresh the page. Then let's select the application type. 
So let's select web application. Then let's provide a name to this OAuth2 client. Then we need to provide the root URL. So let's click on add URI. And let's provide the URL of the home page. Then let's provide the authorization URL. Then create. Now we need to save the client ID and the secret. So let's click on the client name. So this is the client ID and this is the secret and we need to save them in the application. So first let's create additional properties in application.properties. So this is a command that contains the authorization URL. Then we need to add the client ID and the secret of the Google provider. Let's copy the client ID. And let's paste it here. Then let's copy the secret. And let's paste it here. Now let's run the application again. And this time we can see that we have the GitHub provider and the Google provider. If I click on GitHub, we obtain this page. So let's click on Authorize. And this time we obtain this page. So here we have the username and the user role is this value. Let's click on user and we obtain the user page. Now let's log out and let's log in using Google. I will select my account, then continue. And now we are authenticated correctly using Google. So this is the username and this is the user role. So instead of protecting all the routes of the application, now I will show you how to create some public routes. So we need to change the configuration of the application. So let's create a new package. And let's call it config. Then let's create a new configuration file. So it will be a Java class. And let's call it security config. So this class will be used to configure the security of the application. So we need to annotate it with two annotations, which are configuration and enable web security. So with enable web security, we can configure the security filter chain. So here, yeah, let's create a bin of type security filter chain. So we can add a bin of type security filter chain. And here we can configure all of these routes to be public. And any other route requires the user authentication. Also, we can add the form login, but this is not required. We can remove it. And we need to add the OAuth2 login option. Then we can add the logout and we can configure the application to redirect the user to the root URL after the successful logout. Let's restart the application. Then let's refresh the page. So this time we can see that we can access to the home page even if we are not authenticated. Let's click on login and we obtain this page. So here we have the login form and we have the OAuth2 providers. And if we click on user, we can see that we are redirected to the login page. Let's click on GitHub. So now we can access to the user page because we are authenticated successfully. Let's click on logout. And now we are disconnected. In the next video, I will show you how to change the role of the OAuth2 users, how to create a custom login page, how to add role-based authorization, and how to register OAuth2 users in the database. You can find the video link in the description.